We're going to solve a statically indeterminate beam using the slope deflection equations method, which is found in Chapter 11 of Hebler. Uh, the first thing we want to do is identify the degrees of freedom. And in this case, we have three degrees of freedom, a slope at A, a slope at B, and also a slope at C. So the deflected shape of our beam would look something like this. Again, degrees of freedom are going to be theta A, theta B, and of course, theta C. The first step in solving this type of problem um, is identifying the internal moments uh, at say point B and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw free body diagrams or partial free body diagrams of our beam. We have a moment that goes from B to A. We also have a second moment that we're going to need and that is moment from B to C. Notice that I am transferring this moment to the free body diagram of support B. Uh, one thing to note is the sign convention for the slope deflection equations is slightly different than the static sign convention we are used to. Uh, moments, internal moments for this case have to be uh, positive moments are clockwise unlike the static sign convention where positive moments are counterclockwise. So after this first step, the next step is to do uh, fixed end moments. So step two, find, find the fixed end moments. We only need fixed end moments for span AB. The fixed end moment for span BC will be zero. In this case, we have a distributed load. And so my fixed end moment for this case is going to be equal to WL squared over 8. Where W is the distributed load and L is the span of my beam. So for this case, the fixed end moment from B to A is going to be equal to 3 kips and it's positive per foot times 8 feet squared divided by 8 which gives us 24 kip feet Brilliant. Okay, so next thing we want to do is uh, find, well, the fixed end moment before we move on from B to C is equal to zero. Also, the reason the moment is positive is because the direction of the moment is uh, clockwise. So step three is to write down the slope deflection equations. The moment of the near side is going to be equal to 3 EI over L 
times theta near minus the core rotation, which we're not going to worry about in this case because we don't have any differential displacement of the supports, plus the fixed and moment at the near side. So uh, we want to apply this equation first from point or spore B to A. And my span um, B to A feet times theta near, in this case, is going to be theta B. And then the core rotation is zero, so we don't include that. And my fixed end moment is a positive uh, 24 kip feet. Now I have to write down the equation from B to C. And that's going to be 3EI. The length in this case is 10 feet. And my rotation is theta B. Once again, I have no core rotation for that side. And I also have no uh, fixed end moment. This gives me two equations. Um, at this point, those two equations involve three unknowns, MBA, MBC, and theta b. So I need an additional equation. The additional equation I'm going to need, I'm going to use in this case, is the uh, equilibrium equation of that uh, joint uh, b. So let's do that. So step four is apply equilibrium to joint. B. Um, that's going to give me MBA plus MBC equals zero. And that is the sum of the moments uh, join B equals zero. Well, we have gone back to the sign convention, the static sign convention of positive moments being counterclockwise. This is my third equation. I now have three equations and three unknowns. So the next step is to solve for um, solve equations one through three. So first substitute equations one and two into three and we get three e i over eight theta v plus 24 kip feet plus 3 e i over 10 feet theta b equals zero. This yields a theta b equals to negative 320 over 9 EI. That negative indicates that the rotation at B for the beam is counterclockwise. Um, substituting theta B into equations 1 and 2 yields a moment MBA equal to 3 EI over 8 times negative 320 over 9 EI plus 24 kip feet. EIs cancel, and so this gives me. 10.67 kip foot 
moment for B to A. Solving for B to C gives me negative 10.67 kip feet. At this point we need to get the reactions so that we can solve um, or uh, solve the problem, get the shear force and the bending moment diagram. So six reactions. First, I'm going to go ahead and use the right hand free body and see why my moment here M C or M B C is equal to negative ten point six seven hip feet <clears throat> and we have a span of ten feet. So applying equilibrium or the moment equilibrium equation at point B we have 10 and CY minus a minus 10.67 equals 0 which implies that CY is equal to 1.067 kips negative. Now that we have uh, that reaction we can go back to the global equilibrium to see why and that's equal to negative 1.067 kips and we still have a distributed load of 3 kips per foot and so when we apply equilibrium here I have a y and a x three equations 